If you're like me, you grew up wandering blockbuster aisles grabbing every single monster movie you could. Maybe you even rented some of these tapes. These are so nostalgic to me. And when I think of nostalgia, I think of blockbuster. I think of Hollywood video. I think of the VHS tapes of Godzilla, King Kong, Ninja Turtles that I would rent over and over and over again. And one year, my mom got me this, the Imperial Godzilla figure. This was a lot of fans first Godzilla toy. This isn't the one from my childhood. Mine was a lot bigger, but this came into nostalgic a while ago and I just had to put it on my desk. So now that I was obsessed with giant monsters, I had to have more toys. 2004, 2005, where do you go? Toys R Us and KB Toys. What was available at the time were the Bandai vinyls like these. They were awesome sort of five POA action figures and awesome likenesses to the kaiju from the movies. They were durable and so much fun to play with. They also had giant ones, which were just so cool. As I grew up and got more into vintage toy collecting, I kept running into the Trendmaster Godzilla figures. This is the little Bendems one. I don't have any of the actual action figures here at the studio to show you, but these figures were so 90s and they were so awesome. And Bandai just kind of released the same figures over and over again. Not a bad thing, but you know, there was never really anything too new until NECA got the license. This is the 2014 Godzilla. And I remember seeing these on the shelves at Toys R Us and getting so excited that there were new Godzilla toys. Now at my apartment, I have almost every single NECA Godzilla figure that they released, mold-wise, not re-release and special paint job-wise. I'm not buying the NES one, that's insane. And it's also the worst figure they made. And these just spoiled me. There's also SH Monster Arts out there, which SH Figure Arts and Bandai release. And they are the highest quality, most expensive Godzilla figures out there statues aside. And those are fantastic. They have insane amounts of articulation and paint, but they're just so expensive. And a lot of times they just don't really hit that spot for me. NECA's figures, I love. Their sculpts, their paint jobs, and their articulation. Everything is just right in that sweet spot that I want. They're not perfect, but they're one of my favorite toy lines ever released. <laughs> you can understand my devastation when NECA lost the license. The last two figures they released were Biollante and Tokyo SOS, which are two of the best Godzilla figures they have made, period. They ended on such a high note. But that was it. Nothing for a while. Now Super 7 has the license, and I'm sure they'll do some great stuff with it. But they're just not the same, you know? Nothing has just ever culminated in that perfect nostalgia storm like the NECA figures have. Until now. This is Mezco Toys 5 Points XL Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Part 1. Now, if you're familiar with Mezco, they do a lot of 112 scale action figures that are fully clothed and fantastic quality. But these puppies are extra large 5 POA vinyl figures, just like those old Bandai figures that covered my bedroom floor and waged battle with my Transformers and Star Wars action figures. When I saw these were coming out, I had a heart attack, but they're pretty pricey roughly $80, but you get four figures with interchangeable parts that are high quality, five POA final figures. I'm just, I, I couldn't comprehend it. Mezco makes some fantastic quality stuff and they're a bit more on the pricey end, so I don't really have much of their stuff. One of my other favorite toy lines of all time are the Hellboy figures they did for the Guillermo del Toro movies. And that's my biggest sealed collection and those are some of the coolest figures in my collection. So when I found out that Mezco had the license and decided to do them in the same sort of vein as the old Bandai vinyls, I just knew that this is what I'd been waiting for. I ended up picking mine up at Comics to Games, which is our little sister store right next to us over in Florence. And I had a $25 stamp card filled up. So I got this puppy for 50, 55 bucks. And I only opened this up and, and glossed over these figures until I put them back in the box and said, I'm doing a video on it. So you're getting most of my first impressions on this. So before we crack into it, this is a four pack that comes with Godzilla, Rodan, a Mothra larva, and Anguirus. These are all based on their show designs from Destroy All Monsters, which is, arguably one of the best Showa movies. Now the original Gojira is definitely my favorite Godzilla movie ever. I have a soft spot for 2014. Seeing that in theaters with my dad was just so much fun. And Final Wars will always have a special place in my heart. But nothing like these Showa designs makes me more nostalgic. I've blabbered enough, but before we get into it, if you enjoy this video, like, comment, let us know if you'd like to see more content like this. I love doing these toy videos. And we also carry vintage toys, including when we get it in Godzilla stuff over at Nostalgic Video Games. So check that out. Without further ado, 
let's go. So here is everything out of the box and I was just smiling the entire time I was unboxing these things. These are so cool. Just look at this lineup. All the homies are here. We got Goji, we got Robo, we got Lil Wormy, and we got Anguinus. And there's some really special little touches in here that really show that they care. So let's go through these one by one, starting off with our man Goji. So as you would expect, Godzilla comes with the most accessories. He's got a stand, two replaceable arms, an alternate head, and a breath effect part. So often nowadays, you just don't see Godzilla figures coming with atomic breath effect parts. It's just such an important part of the character and it adds so many display options and you can get away with just doing a blob of translucent plastic. It really shouldn't be that hard to manufacture. But before we get into the accessories, let's check out Godzilla himself. He has this little stand here uh, so you can have him displayed with his tail off the ground. Otherwise, that weight can kind of just make him fall back a little bit. Uh, you can get him to balance uh, but it's a little awkward. He's kind of leaning forward a little bit. So having that stand is awesome. So here he is, uh, the way he comes out of the box, he has his open mouth and these open hands here. And this figure just looks so cool. He's done in that dark charcoal gray with what I want to say is very, very subtle hints of green. Now I know that's kind of a, now I know that's a really stereotypical, you know, Americanization of Godzilla made him green all the time where he was really just black or gray. But I'm colorblind, so it's real hard for me to tell. The spines are sculpted fantastically, and this just is the embodiment of that Showa Destroy All Monsters era suit. It's just gorgeous. You have all those sculpted scales in there. The, the paint, for the most part, is really, really well done and is subtle in the places it should be. The eyes look great. They're a little dopey, but that's more of a caveat of this suit design. The toes and the fingers are where I can't quite tell if it's painting error or just the way that there was a wash applied, but there's some black splotches like on, uh, most notably on his right finger here. It's a little noticeable, but it's definitely not enough to detract from the overall look of this figure. So before we swap his head, I'm gonna stick his little breath effect part in here. And this, and this part is just this sort of frosty, translucent, light, light blue color. And it just looks gorgeous. And there's just a round peg at the end there and that just goes right into his mouth. Look at that. Yo, that looks awesome. So this is fantastic and it's a nice stiff plastic. It doesn't feel like it's gonna break, but it also doesn't feel like it's gonna droop and bend. That's a problem I've had with some of the NECA figures in the past. The other parts that you get are alternate hands that are more grabby and relaxed and, and less ready to rumble. And you have this closed mouth head, which just looks Awesome. Uh, I honestly think I prefer the closed mouth, uh, but I think that's more because of how it's sculpted to fit that breath effect in there. You know, there's a little bit of a trade off. But yeah, to swap these, you just pop. And you just pop his head right back on. Same with the arms. Those just pop right out and then pop right back in. It's not too difficult to get them out, but they stick in there nice and tight and they're not going anywhere which is awesome. Sometimes with interchangeable parts, they're either just too tight or too loose, but these are perfect. And these parts have a more outward gesturing, uh, gesturing pose, which is really cool. You can kind of get that uh, Monster Zero dance going. Or, uh, Thank you, Rose. Mom told me it's my turn on the Xbox. For articulation, you got a head swivel from side to side, the arms swivel 360, and the legs swivel 360 as well. There is no articulation point on the tail. There is a relatively obvious seam line there, so it would have been really cool if they gave us some tail articulation. But in the end, even on those old Bandai figures, the tail articulation just kind of angered me as a kid. It was always screwed up how the spines were lined up, so it's not a letdown that there isn't that point there. And it would also technically be 6 POA, and you wouldn't be able to say 5 POA. So overall, this Godzilla is fantastic. I want to compare them to the other Godzilla figures I have here, but we'll get to that after we check out all the other ones. So let's get into Rodan. So here's Showa Rodan on his flight stand. For accessories, you get an alternate head with a closed beak, and you get this stand with this clear acrylic rod that cradles him here so he can have a little flight pose. I love having that option, especially with characters like Rodan or Mothra that are really at home flying. 
And this is pretty much just the same square black plastic stand that we got with Godzilla, except there's a hole in it for that rod to fit into. You can get him to stand just fine on his own, but he has a pretty impressive wingspan, so I would suggest keeping him on the stand just because if there's any unaccounted for shakes or rocks of the shelf, he's gonna tumble. But for sculpt here, this guy looks awesome. He has all those spikes on his chest painted and the wings look so leathery and cool. That is just awesome. This is a really, really classic look for Rodan. Uh, I always liked this look. It's really kind of dopey. I, I really like that deeper reddish brown instead of just the red that Fire Rodan was. He just looks fantastic. And that open mouth there. <laughs> One other accessory comes with is a closed beak head, and this is uh, so far my biggest gripe with this set, and it's really more of a QC thing. The head here is molded in two parts. You have, you have the neck with the beak, and then you have a separate part for the eyes and horns, and that is glued into the other piece. And this one just didn't quite get set right, and you see that sort of alignment peg at the front of the beak there is sticking way up. But overall, I really like the way the open mouth looks. And even though it has that same construction with those two parts, the open beak head was placed much better and doesn't have that same problem. Rodan's articulation's real straightforward. His head's on a 360 swivel, and so are both of his wings. And both of his legs are also on 360 swivels. Uh, so he is truly 5 POA. The paint here also has that black wash that has a few inconsistencies and some splotches, just like the Godzilla. But what is most notable for me here is if you look along the spikes here, not all of them get painted all the way down to the end. And that's not a massive deal, it's just something that does sort of break the illusion because these are so accurate sculpts and they look gorgeous that they really feel like the suits shrunk down, come to life. But that one little thing is like, yeah, this is a mass-produced painted figure. But overall, it's not something you really notice until you're really close with the figure. So it doesn't bug me too much. We'll check that out when we get to Anguirus at the end here. Yeah, overall, Rodan is awesome. I like Godzilla more because it's Godzilla. This is all the allies homies pack, so we gotta have Rodan in there. So next up, let's check out Lil Wormy. So here is the Mothra larva, and this was the one I was the least excited about because it was the least interesting. But when unboxing it, <laughs> this happened. It's a maraca! That is so awesome because that is the sound that the Mothra larva make. Just the love and attention that was put into this. This so easily would have been the cheap just throw-in figure. This is a four pack, you're getting a huge value. One of the figures is gonna get the most love, Godzilla, and one of the figures is going to get the least amount of effort, the no-brainer of the Mothra larva. But that? I don't know. That just proves that Mezco and the designers who made these figures care. <laughs> they said, this is the least enticing figure of the bunch. Let's just give it a little something to excite people. It's so neat. That just made me smile so much. On top of that, she also comes with this web cone effect part that just plugs right into the teeth, and that looks great. It doesn't look quite as good as Godzilla's effect part. Uh, it is just sort of this smoky, white, clear plastic, uh, and it is two parts, so it looks like the end was molded here, and then the outside was molded, and there's a clear seam around the circumference of the cone there. And this one is a hollow, feels a little more brittle. It also has a very thin, thin peg at the end there. So I want to be very careful when plugging that in and out. It also uh, is a bit more uh, mass forward. So I'm very afraid that it would snap off and then you get that clear peg stuck into the little mouth there, which would be damn near impossible to get out. So I don't think I'm going to display her with this web cone. The sculpt of the Mothra larva is exactly what you expect. You got the little furry leg things down here and a little three-prong spike at the end and you've got this texture that goes up along the way and sort of fades into the smooth top. It looks good, there really isn't all that much to say about it. Uh, it does have one point of articulation at the head, uh, so not 5 POA Mezco. It's a worm, what are you gonna do? But yeah, that's pretty much all there is to talk about with Mothra, so let's move on to my boy Anguirus. So yeah, here is Anguirus and out of all of the figures in the set, this was the one I was most excited for. 
As a kid, I had the Bandai vinyl of the Final War Zangiris, which is very similar to this design and is much more refined, I guess you could say, but is definitely a distinct design. As a kid, I really, really wanted a toy of the Showa era Angiris. So that was the biggest thing that caught my eye when I saw this set announced. Just look at that. His sculpt is fantastic. Just like every other figure in this set, every single detail of those classic suits is just perfectly captured here. He has all of these spikes sculpted in there and it's a, it's a little ouchy. The only accessory he comes with is an alternate head with a closed mouth. Uh, but look at that open mouth one. You can just hear his little coming from it. That is just awesome. And he also has that little droopy jaw thing that that dude always had. Just looks fantastic. For articulation, his head's on a 360 swivel. His front legs also swivel and they kind of swivel out a little bit just sort of due to their placement. And the back legs also swivel as well. The back legs are sculpted with a little bit of slant or tilt in the feet so you can pose them kind of how he sits uh, in the movies. So the sculpt is just perfect. The paint has the most splotching compared to all of the other figures, which is more due to you know, just the sheer quantity. Uh, so on his right claws here, you can see some of the worst uh, black splotching of these figures. It's not terrible and that's something I could probably pick off. Uh, but it is worth noting, not a big deal, just something to point out. And on all of the other spines, he has that uh, black wash like a lot of the other figures. So there is just some natural splotching from that just to the, due to the nature of washes. One of the biggest things to me uh, when I first looked at this figure is that if you look at all the spines on his back, the paint doesn't quite go down all the way on most of the spines. There's a good chunk of just sort of unpainted gray plastic hanging out at the bottom of those spines. And that's definitely not something you can see from afar. It's not something you see, you know, even if you're just checking them out on a shelf. But when you get up to it and you hold them, you notice that. It's not game breaking for me. But besides from that little QC issue with Rodan's closed beak, uh, this is the next thing that bugs me the most. Uh, but overall, it really doesn't detract from the look of the figure. Like, this is still Anguirus, and the sculpt hides most of that really, really well. Definitely something to point out if you're really picky about that kind of thing. So yeah, that's all four of the figures that come in this box. I want to get Godzilla out here and compare him to some of the other Godzilla figures I have, so let's check that out. So here he is next to the only Bandai vinyl I have in the studio to show you, uh, the Heisei Space Godzilla. Definitely something to point out is that these are significantly smaller than the Bandai vinyls that they so lovingly reminded me of. That's not a huge deal. Uh, I think if they were bigger, uh, they definitely wouldn't have been able to do a four pack like they did. And with their clear intention of releasing multiple four packs that you can have the entire cast of Destroy All Monsters on one shelf. Yeah, I, I take the size cut. Uh, these are perfect desk size figures. These are gonna go on my desk in the studio. These are just fantastic perfect size, whereas those vinyls are definitely the perfect size to play with. You know, you can, you can grab this thing by a tail and beat it against all your other vinyls. But that was something that kind of caught me off guard. Uh, I'm sure if I looked into it a little more, I would have seen that these were smaller figures. But when I opened the box, I was like, oh, these are way smaller than I thought they were. But in the end, they're not all that much smaller, maybe an inch, inch and a half shorter. But for the amount of stuff you get in here, and like I said, having all those figures on one shelf, it's definitely worth it. And here he is next to the 2014 NECA Godzilla. And just like those vinyls, he is significantly shorter. These NECA figures fit into that same sort of seven inch scale that the vinyls did. The paint jobs are definitely comparable. Uh, it's really cool sort of seeing the different ways that these two companies tackled this license and how NECA did it in the very more, the very hyper articulated larger scale where Mezco decided to size things down to give you the option to have everything on the shelf at one time and give you that five POA nostalgic feel of those vinyls, but stick with that really hyper detailed and fantastic paint job. Really, really awesome to see these guys next to each other. So yeah, here are all the figures all done up and together as one big display. And I'm just so over the moon with how these turned out. I'm so excited I got to pick them up. And there's a part two that's got King Ghidorah, Gorosaurus, Baragon, and Manila. This has definitely sold me on Mezco's take on the Godzilla license, and I definitely want to pick up that part two. So if you'd like to see a video on that as well, let me know in the comments. Please give me an excuse to buy those.
But yeah, if you have this set and have your own thoughts about it, let me know because I'd love to see what other fans have to say about these. Now, I know not everybody in the community was pleased by this set. A lot of weird shipping issues. Round two showed up in stores before round one, which overall, I guess I, I, we can chalk that up to COVID shipping issues. And one thing I wasn't aware about until just recently was Mezco actually changed this set after pre-orders had been opened right before they shipped. Uh, Rodan was originally going to have three heads, one with the closed beak looking forward, one of his standing up face with the open beak, and he was going to have another one with another closed beak. And they removed that from the set without any sort of email notification to any of the pre-order holders, any retailers, anything. There was just radio silence, little switcheroo going on there. In the end, it really doesn't bother me much because there was minimal difference in the heads anyways. But I can see how a move like that doesn't quite endear a company or a product to the community in general. I know there's been some quality control problems with this set. Uh, I just had that little one with Rodan's head. Uh, and yeah, some of the paint isn't perfect. It's 2022, I'm used to Hasbro Black Series. So it's, it's not hard to please me at this point, but I can totally understand where some people just, you know, this set isn't for them. In my case, it feels like this was tailor-made for me. It's so nostalgic. It's just, I'm so happy I can put these in my collection and have a little bit more Godzilla on the shelf. So if you're like me and you're a massive fan of the Big G and his homeboys, I'd suggest picking this up if you can. I know retail on Mezco's website is $85. $85 is a little much for this set, I think. I can agree with that. And that, that's kind of pushing it. You know, $90 US dollars, you know, for four relatively small five POA vinyl figures isn't particularly uh, justifiable. And the price point, I was able to get it at $55. And if you think you'd enjoy it too, that would be such a fantastic price. I, I do kind of see these uh, going on sale because they are kind of expensive and they're probably gonna hang around for a little while. Uh, so I'd keep tabs on places like Big Bad Toy Store because you might might see a 15, 20% sale on these. And if that happens, I would definitely suggest snagging these. So yeah, if you enjoyed and stuck around this long, thanks, I appreciate it. Go ahead, tickle that subscribe button, hit that bell icon so you get notified of all the new stuff. Uh, definitely let me know if you want to see a review on round two. And if you have this set, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Comment and let me know if you like this set as much as I do. Or, I mean, if you hate it, go ahead, argue with me in the comments. But yeah, thanks for sticking around and we'll see you next time.